share and subscribe and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And boy, boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Really, we really do. We have a lot to talk about. A lot of funky stuff is going down. So, you know, if you've been following this series, uh, uh, thank you very much. If you're one of the 12 people who have found this video, awesome. Absolutely awesome. If you like it, and I'm hoping you do like it, could you hit the little like button? That would be really nice. But mostly, could you subscribe and you could share? Because I am on a different channel. I'm on my backup channel. Why am I on my backup channel? Well, it depends how you want to answer that. I would say we're, uh, we're on my backup channel uh, uh, because the will of the good Lord uh, in this specific time of year. What is this specific time of year? Will of the good Lord, we'll get into it in a minute. What is this specific time of year? We are in something called Svirat Haoma. The, uh, uh, this is a 49 period that goes from Passover all the way to the holiday of uh, Shavuot. It, historically, what happened was the Israelites left Egypt on Passover. Uh, on the seventh day of Passover, the Red Sea split. And then 49 days later, 49 days after leaving, not the Red Sea splitting, 42 days, not the Red Sea splitting, uh, 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 the Israelites have arrived at Mount Sinai and you had the revelation of God, right? Which is, I would say, uh, um, and I think, yeah, we, we, we can agree. With, see, I like to focus on we can agree on in the Judeo-Christian world. Uh, uh, we can agree. I think it's probably one of the most important things that has ever happened to our species in this world, right? I think it's a very, very important thing. So the uh, a little bit of background of that, the Jews, uh, uh, well, the Israelites at the time, they were not in a good state. when they, Like morally, they were not in a good state. They were in Egypt, which was the most immoral place in the world, you know, until uh, 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 the current administration of the White House turned up, you know, you know, when Pol Pot's regime looks at them and go, man, you guys are messed up, right? So it was, uh, uh, they're in uh, uh, the incredible evil that was Egypt. Uh, and part of the, the function of the Exodus was to destroy the uh, mentality, the, the, the people's belief in their evil worldview. That, I mean, that's essentially what the ten, uh, ten plagues were, uh, were about. And the splitting of the, of the Red Sea, that was like the stamp on it. The ten plagues actually was for the entire world. The, the splitting of the sea, uh, just for the Israelites. It was a special thing just for you, mate. Uh, um, so... Uh, Kabbalistically, we believe there is a time, uh, uh, this time, this time called Svirata Oma, uh, this 49 days, is, is incredibly powerful for, for growth of all kinds, for spiritual growth. And whatever growth you, whatever effort you put in, the good Lord puts in a lot more for you. So, yeah, you know, how this translates is, is the way a lot of things translate into Judaism. Misery! <laughs> Absolute bloody misery! Uh, you know, the idea is this, that... Uh, um, well, several things. I mean, uh, I've been hit with quite a few uh, 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 challenges, shall we say? To, I mean, hit with, yeah, quite a few significant challenges. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, the first day, literally the first day of this sphere at home period, I, I trot downstairs. I'm all excited to, to actually make this series of videos, right? I'm all excited, uh, and my computer is pretty much dead. So I spend the next few days trying to resurrect it enough so I can record this. I'm thank God I'm using the nicer camera. I'm not on my laptop. Uh, and uh, uh, get off the files I need. But I need to get a new computer. And so this is, that's a big hit, right? That In in, in Israel, that's about, come up to $3,000. It's, it's a lot of money. Was not thrilled. Okay, was not thrilled. But, you know, uh, I have to consider what what's going on. Well, let's talk about more more happen. And then uh, 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 one week into Sveradoma, I, I walk down uh, the stairs to my office again after uh, 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 after Sabbath and and the holiday commemorating the splitting of the Red Sea, uh, and I find out my YouTube channel has got a community strike. So uh, this is probably because. I, I I had a discussion about what is appropriate sexually for young children uh, um, to be to be discussed with, like, and they didn't like that. Actually, I think I, I don't want to say the name, but there is a multinational entertainment corporation who, in a, in a little bit of hot water right now, we do know you, YouTube does somewhat heavily uh, uh, favor the, the international uh, uh, corporations. Well, they pay them a lot of money, I guess. You know, all, you know, all's fair. Um, so. Uh, 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 that happened, and then I try. I went to order after, you know, going through the emotional pain of saying I've got to order a new computer, right? I've got to do it. I, I decide I work out what I want, and they tell, and I, I, I look it up. Forty-five days till delivery. I'm like, what? I can't do this for forty-five freaking days. I cannot do this. And then I find, uh, yeah, if I get one off the shelf and uh, whatever, I managed it, it. Managed to work something out. I'll be ready in three days. But the question is, a God-fearing person, somebody believes in God. 
Why is God constantly kicking me in the balls, right? Like, what? 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 Ha, ha. Now, there's, there's several options I can see before me. One, I, I, I've been a bad boy, right? I've been a bad boy, and God wants to get my attention, and he wants me to not be a bad boy. So, yeah, that's option number one. Now, I, this is a real option. I, I th I've been thinking about it. What is it I could have done? Like, I, I really don't know. Honestly, I really don't know. And, and I, 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 I honestly introspected. Uh, um, so listen, no one is here. Again, I'm mainly talking to Christians, and, and I think you guys understand no one is without sin, right? No one, but like, I, I really do genuinely try to do the will of God, right? <laughs> I, sometimes I sin, sometimes I lose my temper, sometimes I get, I, you know, I get frustrated, but and I feel bad when I do that. But like, generally speaking, uh, 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 I really, I try and do the right thing. I really do. Like, why not? It's the rules. Is that, I think your life's better for it as well, right? I do. I think your life is much happier and better, better for uh, you know for doing that. So that that's the first question, right? What's going on? Uh, uh, um, uh, so I don't think it's that, right? And I know it sounds somewhat arrogant. I mean, there's always an element of punishment, right? When you when you have hardships, but I think it's more. Uh, firstly, the Satan, uh, uh, the Satan, as, as Christians call him doesn't want this series to go out, right? Doesn't want a deep analysis into what is faith and strength in our faith in God. The Satan does not want that at all. Now, a major difference between uh, uh, Jewish philosophy, as I, I understand it, Christian philosophy, is uh, the way we view Satan. Like, the way, uh, uh, like, we don't see him as a fallen angel. We see him as uh, uh, a uh, an angel of God, right? Because... Get, when you get these hardships, when you get these these like real you know questions like how is it you know what's going on, and you you cleave to God regardless. Like I don't know what you're thinking, God. I don't know what you what, what you want, but I will cling to you and I will love you no matter what. Right? I think that uh, I think it makes it much more meritorious. And I was always going to do this series. I'm and and if the Satan's coming out to stop me. Uh, uh, that's when I say no, right? That's when I say uh, nothing's going to freaking stop me as long as I draw breath. And boy, trying everything he can to stop me. But, you know, again, in, in, in Jewish philosophy, the Satan's more like, uh, uh, you know, mourns, it, like tears his shirt, which is a Jewish mourning ritual. You tear you tear your clothes and you sit down and you mourn, right? So in, the, in, the, in, our, in our holy books, it says the Satan uh, uh, sits and mourns whenever anybody, when he tempts somebody to do a sin and he pushes someone to sin, and then you do it. He's like, oh, no, really? I thought you were going to overcome, right? That's essentially, uh, and again, I'm no massive expert on uh, 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 Christian theology. So, yeah, I've, I've read a fair bit, but I'm not, I wouldn't call myself, I wouldn't call myself a maven, right? Which is a bit strange, calling yourself a maven on Christian theology. But anyway, anyway I digress. So, you know, uh, 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 this is really, really... Uh, um, Supercharged me as a certain saint to like to push back, and it's really hurting me. My channel being offline it was really painful, right? It was a real, uh, uh, it was a real kick in the balls. Uh, uh, not quite as much as my computer dying, but like really. And I like what's next, right? What's next in the spirit? So I, I, as you as you probably know, I believe this is the end of days, right? I really believe this is the end of days, or really when we're 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 sidling up to the beginning of days, right? That's what I believe, uh, uh, and. Uh, um, uh, uh, you know, I, I I think this year, this this period, this spirit of Omer period, it, for me anyway, it's been supercharged, been absolutely supercharged because uh, I think we're going to be go going somewhere within this period, right? I think the next funky thing to happen that will go what is 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 due uh, sometime in the, in this period. I I, I, yeah, I I have ideas, but I might be wrong. Listen, I've been wrong about a lot of details, but when you look at the generalities. Yeah, it looks like the apocalypse is coming, isn't it? So what do you do when the apocalypse is coming? Firstly, please subscribe to this channel wherever you see it. If it's on Rumble, if it's on YouTube, that that please subscribe. Uh, and also, if you could share it. Share it is really, really good. Comment that really, really helps me. I am very, very, very appreciative. You know, like, you know, far be it from me to 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 enlist you in my personal struggle against, against pure evil. But I would like to enlist you in my personal struggle against pure evil. So what is this guy? What's going on? on that 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 you know the satan's stepping out and trying to stop us it is this the six constant mitzvot the six constant mitzvot are the six commandments six commandments uh, that deal with what one's relationship with god and, and it's a framework right when you can constantly absolutely constantly uh have a close connection to god have a closer connection to god and so we i want to go over each one one, one of these uh one of these six commandments and, and get a real deep understanding and again i think this is 
applies to Christians. I think it applies to. I think it applies to any uh, uh, applies to any person of faith, right? Any person. Of faith. So right today we're on day eight. Uh, um, and let's have a look where what it has to say. Um, and I get, I'm recording this at ten past one because I've been running around trying to get my new computer sorted out. Uh, I normally like, like to record things in the morning, but then after I record it, I've then got to go try and get the video edited, upload it to Rumble and to my other YouTube channel, and then on my my teeny tiny laptop, I got to try and make the thumbnail, which is really bloody hard. Okay, right? Actually, these ones are quite easy, but uh, 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 not fun, not fun. But again, again. You know, uh, if you ever seen the seen, seen, seen the Truman Show, uh, great movie by uh, Jim Carrey when he was good. The Truman Show, there's a it's basically about a guy who lives in a completely fake world and he doesn't realize it. It, it was a it doesn't really matter, but he wants to break out from it, right? He wants to break out, and, and, and they're like, there's he's on a boat trying to get away, and, and uh, there's storms being made to stop him, and the water's all uh, uh, yeah, very very choppy. It's very very dangerous, and he screams up, "If you want to stop me, you're gonna have to kill me, right? If you want to stop me, you're gonna have to kill me." I, I'm not sure if I'm quite there, but this is kind of where I am. Okay, kind of where I am. Fine. So let's let, let's read today's lesson. It's uh, living uh, uh, living for a purpose. Uh, although the basic element of faith is is to know God exists, the uh, the early rabbis teach us uh, called Rishon and teach us that faith is far more complex. I think yeah, people's of faith, we all know that, right? Uh, uh, Eskimos have a hundred words for uh, 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 for snow. Both Catholics and Jews have two hundred words for guilt. It's incredible. <laughs> it's a it's a little area where we where we all agree. <laughs> um, the book, say for Hina, the, the the book of education, adds that the the more aspects to this commandment all derive from from the verse "I am uh, I am Hashem." Um, I don't know how you would translate that in the Christian in, in Christian uh, uh, Old Testament. I am Hashem, your God, uh, who has taken you out of the land of Egypt. It's the first of the Ten Commandments, or the first two, I should say. According to this book, uh, uh, a believer is somebody that believes. Uh, there is one God. What is, yeah, what is God? Uh, now, again, this is a major difference between Jewish philosophy and Christian philosophy. I think Christians basically believe in one God, but it's a, it's a trinity, right? Three aspects of one, right? Where, where Judaism is so into it just being one God. We don't like that, right? We don't like there being three aspects. We just say there's one. But that's really, for that reason, that reason alone, I, I got, I got in a tiny bit of trouble, not a bit, huge bit of trouble. When I went to Italy and I wanted to go to the Sistine Chapel and also the Whispering Gate, just beautiful. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, Honestly, if you're looking for a, a holiday destination, Italy is gorgeous. Ro I mean, I'm biased because the kosher food is incredible there. Much better than anywhere else. Better than New York, better than Paris. It is freaking incredible. I can't imagine how good the non-kosher food is, right? That must be Insane, it was absolutely insane, but uh, uh, just absolutely, yeah, absolutely uh, gorgeous. So going into uh, uh, Sistine Chapel, according to some opinions in in Jewish law, uh, you are you are breaking the commandment of uh, of 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 uh, uh, what's the word of supporting idolatry, right? Because they they say, ah, oh, it's divided into three, it must be so. Uh, uh, but again, it's a minor opinion. But yeah, anyway, but I, I think I do think that Christians, generally speaking. Believe in there is only there is one God, right? What is yeah, one God. Uh, the one God is responsible for all that exists. Um, he existed and will exist both uh, deciding what to create and being the only one with power to uh, carry out his decisions. Yeah, I, again, I think we're all we're, we're all on board for that. I, if I'm not, comment because that helps helps the algorithm. Uh, the God responsible for creation also took the Jews, or I would say the Israelites. Out, yeah, out of Egypt. Uh, uh, the book, uh, uh, book of education, adds that we should not allow our heart to convince us that all the miracles sur surrounding Exodus, Exodus were mere coincidences. And, and I would like to say to you guys, imagine what it was like for an average Egyptian living during the Ten Commandments, the, the Ten Plagues. Right? What would it? What, what would the world look like? What would it feel like? I think it will feel like the world right now. Right? It, 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 We've seen America, the world power, the world power, being smacked in the balls, and much like myself, over and over and over again over the last uh, last year. So I, that's why I think things are coming to a head. Um, 
Rather, we must believe that God performed the miracles in fulfillment of his pledge to his ancestors they will take us out of Egypt. But I think he also, I, I, this is general Jewish philosophy, I think uh, uh, the function of the Exodus that was, was to uh, uh, instill the idea there is a one loving creator, right, that wants to have a relationship with you. That that's essentially the the you know was the idea uh, uh, that God created the world and took us out uh, and yeah you know, uh, took uh, the Israelites out uh, out of Egypt to take them to Mount Sinai and eventually give them the 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 Old Testament right so and again I don't think where where there's again let me know in the comments I don't think there's any real difference between Christian theology and, and Jewish theology on the these these old uh, Old Testament matters. Uh, so another book called uh, Sefer Mitzvahs Hakatsa, uh, or for an abbreviation for that, it's Smack. <laughs> uh, uh, by uh, fine, but as he adds more, uh, the Talmud though, that's a uh, the the seminal work of Jewish law, uh, in the Tractate of uh, Sabbath, uh, page thirty one, side 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 one states. That one uh, states that the questions as uh, states that one of the questions uh, what uh, one of the questions a person will be asked on the day of judgment is did you await uh, salvation did you did you await the end of days with excitement again talk to Christians I, you guys do <laughs> I think you guys you guys are kind of into this uh, um, smack I love that abbreviation uh, reasons that we would not uh, we would not be asked whether we waited for salvations if we never commanded to uh, explicitly to do so where do we find a commandment to await for the Messiah uh, is, is there a commandment for that for the second I don't know in the in the, in the New Testament uh, he answers uh, he answers the source of the commandment comes from the verse uh uh the, the first the uh, the first of the ten commandments i am god right uh um i am uh, i am Hashem, your god uh that ple uh, that pledge he would he would take the israelites the the, the children of uh, abraham abraham isaac and jacob out of the land of egypt and he also pledged to redeem them from exile uh just as the uh, uh, this is the commandment of uh, that one uh, requires us to believe that God redeemed us from the Egyptian exile. So we must have faith that there will be a, an eventual, uh, eventual fi final redemption. Which is again, where do I just I have the vibe that seems to be what what we are really close to, right? What we are really, really close to. Thus, the these early rabbis called the Rishonim provide uh, provide us with a list of five factors. Um, Five factors of which we must uh, be cognizant in order to fulfill this commandment of having faith, right? Man, do you, do you see why Jews don't have Christmas trees, right? Because we, we, we would have so, we would have books like this big on what the ornaments should be. Is it kosher if you use popcorn? Uh, uh, what, can you dangle? Are you allowed to dangle from the Christmas tree? <laughs> Your baubles, she cried. Uh, um... Uh, are we really expected to track all, uh, uh, all five of these factors every second of our lives? We will never be get get. Uh, we haven't get to any of the, the rest of these constant commandments if we're doing that, those as well. As explained earlier, the underlying concept of the uh, of the constant commandments is not uh, to reflect on all aspects of every second of the day. Uh, many pieces of information are stored in our subconscious mind. Very true. And. Uh, although we never really think about them actively, we reflect them uh, through our actions. When a person walks into a room and turns on a light, does he think, it's dark, if I want to avoid bumping into things, I better turn on the light. Uh, just as, right, no, right? You just turn the light on. Uh, just as one keeps track uh, of whether or not it's day or night by focus, uh, uh, without focusing on it, faith uh, must also be ingrained in our, in our hearts and our mind. That we uh, that is reflected in our every action, right? That the yes, I do agree. Uh, that might be easy if uh, faith required only that our actions reflect uh, the recognition of God's existence. But how can uh, how can we re how can we reflect our belief in all uh, in all of the factors listed uh, listed in the uh, uh, these these early rabbis? Uh, there must be one concept that you uh, unites. Uh, all the aspects of all the aspects of faith, and it is uh, through reflect reflecting our, be our belief 
in the concept that we can have uh, that we can fulfill the mitzvah of faith every second, every day. So let let's hear right uh, purpose uh, in the world is the is the paragraph heading. If there is one word that actually represents God's existence, uh, his oneness, his being, the sole creator of the Exodus and Egypt, the transmission of the uh, the transmission of the Bible and the final redemption, what word, uh, that word is purpose, right? Purpose in the world. Let us, uh, let's start from the end. Why do we want the messianic age to come? Well, I, I, I told it's going to be quite groovy, really. I, 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 we all like things to be quite groovy, which is... This stark opposite of what my last couple of weeks have been, right? Stark opposite. Uh, nine days, I should say. Uh, eight days, actually. Uh, that word is perfect. Let us start from there. Why do we want the messianic times to come? We may have need. Uh, uh, we may. Uh, we may need him to re uh, uh, redeem us from from our troubles, both on a personal and a national level. Yes. Yeah, I, I will take personal, but that's that's because I'm selfish. Uh, but does that mean he must come? Uh, yeah, I think so. Anyway, let's see. Uh, a sage called the Maral writes uh, that the Messiah must come because this world is not an end of it, end of itself. Right? God created this world and everything in it to enable us to indulge in the greatest pleasure of all, to bask in the glory of the divine presence. Right? We we can. Enjoy that pleasure only when uh, all creation has attained perfection. Uh, well, blimey, we've got a bit of a wait then, uh, which can only happen when the Messiah comes. It's interesting. Uh, we are sure that the Messiah uh, that the Messiah will come. Therefore, uh, therefore, because we know that God will orchestrate events in in a manner that will lead to fulfillment of His will, as seems to be happening, right? As seems to be happening. Uh, which can occur through uh, uh, which, which which can occur through the Messiah's arrival. Uh, we we await him daily in accordance with uh, the uh, another rabbi, the Rambam's thirteen uh, fundamentals of faith. Hereby displaying our cognizance of the true purpose of the world and our desire to experience perfection. So basically, you say waiting for the messianic age with braided breath, right? And again, for you Christians, it'll be the second coming. Uh, uh, this is the fulfillment. This is the complete fulfillment of the uh, of the commandment to have faith in God. Why? Because that's the purpose of of the world. That's why God made the world, right? So to bring this messianic age that we can achieve perfection. Because the reason we believe, and I have, uh, again, I, I I am not not up on Christian theology, but the reason we believe that. Uh, um, uh, uh, that that the God created the world and created people was to be able to give right was to be able to uh, uh, give something of meaning and so he created beings and then gave them the ability to grow by putting them in this dark awful world right but eventually we'll grow enough and we'll get into a nice groovy messianic world uh, if we review the the factors uh, uh, considered to be part of this commandment uh, the commandment of faith there uh, we find. That uh, we 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 find that uh, they all fit into the purpose for which for which God created the world. One belief in God, right? It's clear uh, that suggestion uh, that, um, that we can't be suggesting that the belief uh, that belief that there is one God is part of the uh, the, the the commandment of faith because belief is uh, is subject to a separate const uh, a separate constant commandment. Uh, called Yichud Hashem, believing in, in one God, right? So that's another one of the six constant mitzvahs. Rather, it's teaching us that faith includes belief, uh, uh, includes that um, belief that God had one purpose in creating the world to enable us to bask in his glory. Well, that's, that's, there's other ways of looking at it, but yeah, I generally speaking agree. Belief that one God uh, created all, uh, all that exists, exists and will exist, both in terms of uh, deciding what to create and having power to uh, create it. It's axiomatic uh, that there must be a purpose necessitating uh, necessitate all, uh, all of creation. Uh, is uh, Yes, otherwise why? <laughs> why go to all the trouble, right? Why go to all the trouble? Number three, God is responsible for the creation and he took the Israelites out of Egypt. We kind of consider that one a big deal, right? We we we, we kind of focus on that one. Uh, the exodus of Egypt and the belief that it was uh, God who performed the, uh, those wondrous miracles reinforces the faith that 
Uh, God did not abandon the world after creation. He controls it into uh, minimalist detail uh, with divine uh, uh, divine providence. And again, but I think I, I, I think these real hardships. And again, they've been real genuine kicks in the balls, right? Uh, uh, that I think that that they're miraculous. I think that is divine providence, uh, uh, and I think it's designed to. M just give me more merit for making these keep on going, right? Just keeping on going. I was, was going to do it anyway. Uh, uh, just as we must believe that God heeded our cries, and we didn't, we didn't cry. We, we in our tradition it says uh, uh, God, God heeded our groans, right? Not even our cries. Um, and uh, 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 where were I? Uh, uh, believe that it was and reinforces the faith. Uh, that God will not abandon the world after creation. Oh, wait, no, correct. I just said that. Where, where, where? That uh, he their cries and led us out of Egypt in it with a series of events, thereby bringing the world closer to perfection. Now, I really believe, right? I really, and I might well, well be completely wrong about this, right? I, I'm really of the belief that uh, uh, at the time of the uh, revelation at Sinai, the the the, the Israelites, the Israelites were were chosen to be the conduit. Uh, between humanity and God. I, I suspect now this is more uh, over the last couple of thousand, well, about 3,000 years, mutated into, uh, basically because the Jews have not been, <laughs> haven't really lived up there in such a wonderful way, uh, mutated into peoples of faith, right? Peoples of faith. Um, so, I, and it's, it's supposed to be the, the, the final redemption, which again... I think we're a couple of weeks away, mate. I think we're just a few weeks away. Uh, uh, maybe a few months. The final redemption is supposed to dwarf the the uh, 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 the exodus. So, whoa! <laughs> Hold on to your hat. Uh, he cry, wait, 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 uh, thereby bringing the world close to perfection. So too, we believe he orchestrates the, the world, uh, world events until this very day, steadily bringing the world close to perfection. Again, I think it's easy to see right now. Number four. Uh, God gave us the the Bible, right? Uh, which is this function, one of the functions of uh, of of, of uh, the Exodus. Since God created the world so we can take pleasure in His presence, it follows He must give us a guide with which to uh, perfect the world and hasten the day that we will that it will become possible through His guide of the Bible. Yeah, uh, listen. Have you ever got? got uh, remember when you used to get a computer and it comes with a user manual? You you ever looked at it? I get the feeling the Old Testament might be a bit like that. <laughs> It's like somewhere stuffed in the back of a shelf, you know, that you worried that you might need at some point. Uh, when we internalize these beliefs and uh, start to view the world through a proper perspective, historical events are, are, that are otherwise inexplicable begin to make sense. We learn to view history in terms of uh, of the world being moved closer to affection and not as a series of unrelated events. Very, yeah, okay. So uh, we end with this little story. Shortly after uh, World War II, the, the, the Holocaust, a survivor came to a, a huge rabbi called the Chazanish, right? A man who had been a, dis uh, a believer uh, before the war, but the atrocities he had witnessed had shaken his faith. Very understandable, right? Very understandable. He asked a question that many, uh, many of us uh, at, uh, at, at the time and still ask. How could God have allowed that destruction to take place? Like, yeah, how can I square that with my my, my worldview? Uh, if you were to see a world-class ta uh, tailor take a bolt of expensive cloth and cut it to pieces, you would uh, uh, you you would ask why he ru uh, ruined the cloth. I'll give you another example, which I think thinks better. If you are like uh, from the Middle Ages and you went and you suddenly appeared in an operating theater and you saw somebody being cut open. Right, the blood. I don't think you will think he's being murdered. No, he's being saved. Right, he's being saved. Uh, you would understand that. Uh, 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 you uh, you would so you can say the same with doctor. You would understand the the tailor is making something stunning from those pieces. During the Holocaust, uh, God shredded the world. Yeah, I think it's fair. And, and European Jewry in particular, yes, he did into pieces. It can be, you you can be sure that the resulting garment will be wondrous. Uh, um, I hope so. I hope so. Listen, I, look. Speaking of somebody who lives in prophecy and miracle, like I I walk outside my door and, and I'm I, I'm living in a town that shouldn't exist. Uh, in a country surrounded by enemies that shouldn't exist, but I'm a member of a nation that shouldn't exist. I, I, being look, being an Orthodox Jew, that is uh, the definition of living in miracle. If anybody ever wants to visit me out here in Israel, more than welcome. I'm 
Benjamin, you know, like Benjamin won the 12, uh, 12 tribes. I had Benjamin's tomb like five minutes away from me, right? That's what it's like living in Israel. It is crazy. But also you live in constant miracle. Sometimes those miracles are really cool. Sometimes those miracles are your computer crashing and you getting a community strike, which is somewhat more mundane. Uh, uh, but everything's a miracle, baby. Everything's a miracle. And I think that's the way Hashem wants us to look at the world. Join me tomorrow as we continue this series. My name is Lila Beck and the rabbi from another planet. Subscribe! Please subscribe! Please share! Uh, please comment and, and do all the other good things. Because that'll be Fan Dabby Double Dozy!